if you go dig deep and you learn the history and you learn the dance and you learn what breaking is about, you will always understand that there needs to be something stylistic to what you do. Because if you look generic, you're probably not going to even qualify for anything like that. Uh, all that matters. And hopefully we're able to preserve that and pass that down for whoever decides, you know, to join the Olympics or not. Like it's, it's all around as a community, we got to just pass that on and, and people got to grow and understand that part of uh, the movement. Very quickly, before we get into it all, just want to say a big, big thank you to Freestyle Session, who are bringing us today's show. We've got a special discount for all of our viewers here at Stance Elements. Go to freestylesession.com and use the code Stance Elements at checkout for 20% off your total order. Now, without further ado, let's get into it. What is up, guys? Welcome back to Stance Elements. I'm Chaz B. I am your host. I am so excited for this one because I'm with the homie Rocks Right from the Renegade Rockers and the BC1 All Stars. What's up, man? It's really good to see you again. What's up, man? Yeah, I'm glad to see you as well. It's been a, it's been a while, right? <laughs> it sure has. And you've been really busy with the pandemic and within your travels as well. You were recently mm -hmm. at the Space City Classics, which looked like a crazy event. I mm -hmm. believe you came second there. Mm -hmm. Just let us in on your experience there at that whole event. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, with the Break Free, what they're doing, Moy and, and the team, um, they decided to invite only eight guys directly straight to the battles. And each battle gets set up like the, the first battle is like an exhibition pretty much. But then it's in tournament mode. Uh, everybody that competed gets paid. Um, the other thing with it was that it was a pay-per-view event, so people have to pay to watch the battles, and 60% of the revenue goes to the competitor, which is like something new, and I think it's something that can bring value to the competitors and the dancers involved in the competition, so I thought it was really cool. The whole experience was cool. It was three days of, of uh, you know, like workshops and, and panels and just, you know, connecting with everybody, and then the main day was the last day, but um, that battle, I mean, it was good, man. It was, uh, you know, they had a good lineup of eight. Uh, you know, they had a uh, me, Box, Gravity, um, Flea Rock, Palmer, Melissa, Kate, and Phil Wizard. Um, so that was the eight invites. And, um, you know, my first battle was against Gravity. Uh, and that one was promoted pretty well. Uh, and me and him have had history. So that battle was, you know, it kind of like built up this anticipation. That Red Bull monster. Battle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it was just this battle that we, you know, had so many classics, I guess. And uh, it was just, uh, you know, I just prepped up for it. I felt good going in. Um, I, you know, I think I had been training for around six weeks at that point. Uh, so I felt pretty good. Um, did my thing, made it past the first round. Then I had a battle box one in the second round. Um, that battle was good as well. Box was doing some good stuff as well. Uh, both of the guys did their thing. Uh, I was able to come out on top and then in the final battle it was a five round battle and I just gassed out and after like the third round I was like done my stamina was really bad which was my my struggle going in I kind of felt it in my training as well because I've been training at this gym and you have to wear a mask but I couldn't tell if it was the you know the the mask that was affecting me with my breathing uh, but I could feel that I would get gas after a certain amount of rounds. Um, so I knew that that was going to be a problem. But yeah, once I went in and did the battle, definitely like, that's that's what it came down to with stamina. Um, but yeah, a lot of work to do still. That that was motivating afterwards. And it really pushed me to, or it's pushing me to want to work harder. It sounds like there's a, a shift in your mindset when something like that happens. Almost like there's a panic when you're worried about your energy. And then it sounds like it completely throws you off from your mm -hmm. rounds anyway. Yeah, yeah, because at that point you're you're focusing on surviving and you're breathing instead of focusing on enjoying the music and dancing and exploring your movements. So stamina is really important when it comes to you be able to execute and be able to do what you want to do. Um, you know, stamina has been it's been a tough one lately. I think it's been you know I got sick last October and I felt after that for the last couple of months I've noticed that when I play sports or do something really extreme where I'm pushing myself to run or break a lot of rounds I feel I feel it um so I don't know if it's the after effects of you know getting sick um but yeah I feel like before I didn't feel it and in the last maybe yeah the, like the last three months I started to notice something when I try to do a lot of rounds so 
just got to get back to running again and, and running everything over and over to get accustomed to my breathing. And would you say that's the the most effective way for someone to build up their endurance in their rounds? Well, I mean, yeah, you want to, you know, footwork is a, something that really gives you a lot of stamina when you do a lot of footwork uh, as well as uh, running. So it's just both, you utilizing both and doing both is really important to be able to, you know, breathe and, and learn how to breathe better and, and expand your, your breathing and everything. So that way you don't fatigue as fast uh, when you're competing, when you're moving with breaking is so extreme, right? You're using every part of your body. So stamina is really important. So you got to build that up and be able to go the distance when needed. Um, and that's what's going to make you survive these battles and outlast everybody because <laughs> Phil Wizard looked good all the way through at, at the end, you know, had a solid five rounds, you had the energy. So definitely paid off for him. And that's you got the physical side covered. What about the mental side? Is there anything that you reinforce to yourself when you're in that moment where you feel like you're on your last legs? Uh, I mean, mentally, yeah, it's just that survival instinct, right? It's just like, oh, shit, I can't fall. <laughs> I can't make mistakes. I still got to look somewhat good at what I'm doing. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the mentality is really more about, you know, when you're in those moments, it's, you're trying to just survive in a way. So you're mentally staying focused on what you got to do. Um, but the mentality is to this battle and the approach to it uh, was really just more about... Um, pushing myself to to this level knowing that i had a battle guys that are on on top right now they're doing a lot of good stuff uh they're winning a lot of tournaments and just dominating all across the scene in different areas throughout here in the states and worldwide so for me to be able to show up and compete at that level and hang with these guys that are at that level um that was really the 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 drive right that was something that pushed me but also the mentality is to just be me and try to deliver the best me that i could just be 100 percent rocks right on that battlefield is that something that's on your mind a lot the idea that you've been around for such a long time and now there's really young guys that are making waves and are seen and just hoping that not only that you hang with them but you can also win against them as well yeah i mean you know being aware of that as, as a competitor and being actively still in the scene on that side of things um I mean, yeah, the new talent comes in, you know, I've seen so much, so many dope boys coming up now as well. And throughout the years, I've seen so much talent come and go. Um, definitely. I mean, you have to be on your toes. You have to stand your, your toes and you got to be ready at all times. But, you know, with me being seen, it's what makes it, it could be a double-edged sword on one side, you know, because I've been around people automatically put you in the spot that you're only getting on because of your name. Uh, but I, I, I approach that differently. I think that once you have a name, it's harder to keep it and stay at that level uh, and be able to maintain and keep up with your movements and continue to evolve your movements. It's easy to just run back and do everything I've been doing for years. But my goal has always been to evolve and my goal has always been to bring new steps to every battle that I do. Whether it's a new move or a new thing or just do things and, and challenge myself to do things that I haven't done in battles for a long time or, or things I've never even attempted in battles. That way I stay, I still try to stay fresh and renewed every time I hit the battlefield because yeah, with my experience, you know, yeah, I could go into a battle and do all the signatures I've had for years, but I don't find the enjoyment and just running it exactly the same way, right? You're going to do the move because that's what you're known for, but I want to find new ways into it and new ways out of it and new ways to utilize it in today's time and the way that I'm moving now. So for me, that's the challenge and that's sort of what kind of, well, that's what keeps me battling and that's what keeps me, you know, bringing it to these, these younger guys and stuff, you know, I mean, obviously they're way more dynamic, explosive and just have so much energy and amazing movements nowadays that it does make you question like, what can I do against this? But that's the challenge, right? That's the, that's that question you got to answer for yourself with the way that you grow in this dance and the battle mentality and the approach to battle and do you still want to do that? Do you still want to challenge yourself at that level? And if you're up for it, then that's what you got to go for. And that's where I'm at. Sounds like the hunger is there still. Yeah. <laughs> How do you keep the hunger there? Because <laughs> there must've been times where you've had the ups and downs where you've mm -hmm. been riding those waves of like, I'm winning all these major events. Mm -hmm. And then you, you, you may be on a slide. And then mm -hmm. the older that you are, 
the harder that it might be to keep it at a consistent level. Mm-hmm. So how is it that you manage that? I mean, to stay consistent, it's just more about, I mean, for me, it's all about remembering ideas, moves, and, and making sure I don't blank out and lose ideas, you know, that I've had. It's just more about polishing up on things, maintaining, most of the time is really maintenance, right? You're just maintaining your body, you're maintaining your understanding to break in and what you're capable of doing at the moment that you decide to get back into it right for example if i travel for like five months at the end of those five months i will not be able to do a lot of the things that i was doing prior to the traveling so like being being okay with that and accepting that there's certain things that i can't do right now at this moment i will get back to those moves again but at this moment i have to accept that i can't do a lot of things that i that i would want to do in certain ways so you know fatigue muscle loss you know like there's a lot of things that go on when when you're not as consistent but accepting where you're at and working around those weaknesses and working around where you're at at that moment so understanding what strengths you do have and utilizing and maximizing those strengths to the best of your ability is what keeps you consistent and will will keep you relevant in the way that you're moving right because it's about style breaking is all about style yeah you could have crazy moves but you have no style behind the moves you're not going to survive in this dance. It's not something that will last forever because moves fade, but style doesn't. So the moves, as you age, you lose a lot of moves, but your style stays growing forever. And that depends if you want to keep evolving that, right? And you want to stay in that mindset. Uh, but for me, what, when it comes to that, it's just more about um, what's staying on it or, or, or being consistent or what keeps me driving. For me, it's the idea of breaking, just the whole mentality of being a B-boy. It's like, yeah, you're a battle cat. Breaking is about battle and it's been a battle dance since the beginning, you know? And uh, for me, that in itself is what I represent. I'm a B-boy. So I got to always be ready to test myself. And if I want to talk that shit or you want to talk shit as like being in the scene, then I got to be able to back it up, right? If I want to critique people, if I want to be judging people and, and telling them their weaknesses, then I got to be willing to step up to the plate and level up on my weaknesses right and so just that whole mentality but also the biggest piece that keeps me driving is music you know i always have to find new beats i always have to find new instrumentals i hear a new track that i hear on uh, somewhere maybe somebody played it somewhere i went and it's just a dope beat that i feel like i want to dance to then i go find the instrumental or i go find music and new mixes new sound and and that's what keeps you moving because this is a dance and throughout the years the music is something that i've always gone back to to find inspiration and, and energy and, and just the feeling of movement, right? Because music is what moves us. One side is the physical and the dynamic side of wanting to level up on crazy moves. But then there's that stylish part where you still want to look fresh when you're doing it. And that comes through music, music and fashion, right? Yeah. Is that something that you're worried about will get lost with the Olympics and with the new wave of athleticism that is coming into our scene where the focus is only on your physical ability to move, not on everything else that enforces that move? Uh, I mean, it is a worry, right? But I feel the people involved in creating the formats to, to, to decide the winners, which is the judging side, I feel like they understand that the dance is a dance first. And I feel that that's something that they're trying to highlight and make sure that it's preserved in the, in the formats that are being utilized. Uh, Of course, it's a worry, you know, but I I feel that eventually it it has to be that you have to go back to the dance part of it, right? The the crazy moves and the the stuff that comes with breaking and and it's so makes it so beautiful to watch. uh, You still got to dance within all that, right? So I feel like, yeah, in some ways it it could get lost, but I think it's our job as a community and as B-boys and B-girls around the world to preserve that and really pass that knowledge down and really share the understanding of the dance side of it. Uh, that way, the you know, the whole idea of having a style, the whole idea of, you know, having that impact, I think kids will eventually just fall into it naturally if they really care about it. If you go dig deep and you learn the history and you learn the dance and you learn what breaking is about, you will always understand that there needs to be something stylistic to what you do. Because if you look generic, you're probably not going to even qualify for anything like that. Uh, all that matters and hopefully we're able to preserve that and pass that down for whoever decides you know to join the olympics or not like it's it's all around as a community we got to just pass that on and and people got to grow and understand that part of uh the movement word because usually we hear over time the advice for the young kids is just to get the physicality down 
mm-hmm. like they're at that age they're they they don't weigh as much so they can move around a lot more <laughs> and then the older that they get the more that they can appreciate uh hip-hop culture the music and the origins and everything would would you say that that's that's a fair comment or is there a different approach no i mean that's usually that's i mean that's how everybody starts you know i mean majority we see breaking and we i mean for myself first thing i saw was power moves as well and that automatically that's what i did for the first year and a half right and then i learned you know people put me on like my mental ground level started like teaching me like hip-hop and, and the idea of being a b-boy beyond the moves uh and that's when i really discovered that there's like this whole different element of breaking besides the moves because once you run the same thing over and over it's eventually you get, you're going to get bored of it right so maybe you just want to do windmills to impress somebody at the club or at a party or something but then once you go deep enough it's like all right, i can already do this what else can i do so you start venturing out to new things and i feel once you know this young talent that's coming up or just kids that uncover themselves or discover this these dynamics of breaking eventually they're gonna expand into into more creative ways of doing it and that's where the whole idea of well, that's when the whole style thing and the, the mentality comes in, right? But not everybody gets it and it's not for everybody. That's another thing that we got to remember. Some people will just do what they want to do with it, which is awesome. And it's there's nothing wrong with that. But those that want to preserve that part of breaking the idea of carrying a style or, or an approach to the way you move, that is something that you, those that want it will go search for it. And they will search for it and they will find the history. They will find the idea of the of the b-boy and and, and then maybe they, if they choose to and they fall or it connects with them or they fall in love with it then it'll be something that they pursue right but not everybody will do that that's another thing i think it's yeah you're right you, we too we do push the physicality on the kids and stuff and, and and a lot of people do share that but there is people out there that are sharing the idea of like hey add that dance to it make sure you understand the music make sure you work on your tops because if you have corny tops and you look wag more than likely the rest of your breaking won't match your top so you really have to like you know you have to look mature in your dance you gotta mature and flow and have a good look to the way that you move and i mean you know when you look at the icons of breaking they're timeless and they're timeless for a reason so if you want to be a fad and a trend for now that's fine in 20 years we'll see if you'll still be around that's a lot to take in bro i'm not gonna lie but it's good <laughs> because then it means that <laughs> <laughs> everybody watching they just need to keep listening to that over and over again i don't think there's anything that you can add to that but i do want to round off just by asking you mm-hmm. uh when's the next time we're going to see you rep with the bc1 um all-stars i know that it's been a while since we've seen you with the other guys mm-hmm. and um i know that there's maybe newer people coming in as well so i just wanted mm-hmm. to ask yeah uh with the bc1 all-stars right now uh, i haven't been competing um with the with the team uh, right now, I'm part of an icon program that we're we're growing on. Uh, so that side of it is more like let the younger guys represent the all stars now. You know, like all the new people that we're we're on there, we're getting on the team, and all the new talent that's coming on. Uh, it's more for them to stay active and represent the name. I did my share. You know, I was pretty much one of the first guys to like lead the all star name into a battle. Uh, I took men on again to Frisco. We went. I mean, we battled everywhere, and and. We put our names in the line, so I help establish that. But at this point in my breaking, I feel like uh, with Red Bull, it's more about um, this young talent really like representing the all-star image and the battle mentality of the squad with the younger people. I think with me, I feel like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm back with Renegades battling more or battling with Squadron more. Uh, so for now, that's that's where I'm at. And with the icon stuff, we're more about mentoring and teaching and, and judging and stuff like that. So you know, that's, that's uh, where I've headed with or where I've headed to uh, with the All-Star. So that's why you don't see me battling as much. Uh, since being an icon, it doesn't require you to be as active on the battle side with the team. So, yeah, I mean, I'm down still, but, you know, I, it's okay to see the young talent come in and, and take over and do their thing because they're super gifted at what they do as well. We already know you're an icon, man, but it's good that you're getting that recognition from, from those guys over there. But look, bro, thank you very much for your time. It's been amazing to have you on and I'm really looking forward to seeing you soon. Yeah, man, no doubt, man. Thanks for having me.